Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here, and this is the Astrological Winds Channel. I'm going to take a look at the Astrological Weather Report for the week of July 24th through 30th in this blog. And the Astrological Winds Channel is a video blog that I do on YouTube every week. So if you are liking the blog and you have a YouTube account, please become a follower and turn on your notifications and you'll know when the blog is on and put up every week. Also, the blog is available on all kinds of podcasts, so you don't have to be married to the YouTube thing. Podcasts can free you up to do a lot of other stuff while you're listening to them, so just look up the Astrological Wings channel on whatever your favorite podcast is. Um, it's distributed through Buzzsprout, and I know about 20 different podcasts pick it up, so if you can't find it on one, then just look for it at on another one and I like to remind everybody it is a free service so if you could do me a great favor and a little bit of a pay it forward is to pass the link on to somebody else you know who might be interested in it and remember there's a lot of people who are interested or believe in astrology these days so um, you know if you've done it already, can you maybe find someone else to do that for? And the other great way to support me is to, if you're ever interested in getting a professional astrology reading done for you, or you know someone that would like to have one done, I've been a professional astrologer, um, educated for seven years before that, I've been doing readings for over 20 years professionally, so I'm love to do that for you or someone you know and just get in touch with me um really the best way to do that guys is through my email right now um i know sometimes people leave stuff in the comments asking me to contact them really you know, i give the email out at the beginning and end of every blog so please it's m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 at gmail.com if you want some contact directly with me that is really the best way to get me in um, a timely fashion anyway so one more time that's m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 at gmail.com and I will give more information at the end of the blog more detailed about the readings and other things to offer if you can hang around to the end of that. Um, so this week, I, I want to talk about a, um, a, a really interesting God configuration that's going on with Mercury conjunct Venus at the end of Leo, and they're both hitting the Neptune sextile Pluto that's been going on and off for decades. And also, Mercury is going to change signs this week and go into Virgo. But before I get into those two things, which are really the big two things of the week, I just wanted to review a couple things that just happened uh, yesterday and the day before on the weekend. One of them, which I mentioned in the week, in the monthly, actually, for July. And I just want to remind people because there was so much going on last week that I didn't really get to talk about these couple things, but they do affect things on a longer term than just a day or two so i'd like to just bring them up as little reminders and that is we did have the exact jupiter neptune semi-square on the weekend and i talked about that like i said in the monthly but this is in general just remember this is about feeling like you're our ideals or your ideals are frustrated in the real world that you're just not getting the reaction that you want in the real world from your from your ideals but yet at the same time realizing that a lot of your inner world is a lot more important than things that are going on in the outer world so there's like you know this vision of seeing like a deeper reality like the tip of the iceberg is what the outer world and the external world is, which are not meeting a lot of the ideals, but in the inner world, in the world's, maybe the spiritual world or whatever you want to call it, you can really, um, 
you know, that's where you sense there's a deeper reality that has more truth to it. But unfortunately, it doesn't blend really well right now with what's going on in the outer world. So that's a lot of what, um, you know, just like conflict with beliefs and reality. And you can see that going on in society too, because these are societal, Jupiter's a societal planet. And just seeing like how there's conflicts in beliefs where both sides end up feeling frustrated about that. Um, and then also on Saturday, we just went into the Leo season for the sun. Also the sun went into Leo. And you know, this is a time where we really need to express ourselves. We really need to show who we truly are, the creative uniqueness that we bring to the table, that we bring to life. And Leo is a very playful and fun energy in general. You know, it wants to go out there. It wants to show itself off. It can even get to the point of being voyeuristic about it. Somehow we want to, we want to be, and usually are, and can become the center of attention in our world and something that's important. And by doing that too, we kind of become almost like a natural leader too. Leo is about leadership and we're all leaders in the things that we are naturally good at. And that's what the Leo time is all about. It's like about pushing that kind of energy. And sometimes it can be too pushy. It can come off as arrogant or self-righteous or vain. There's a lot of pride issues that can be wrapped up in Leo energy, ego kind of energy, but it's also very enthusiastic. It's positive. It's honest. It's forthright. You know, it's, it's, it's out there really showing who it is. And it can be very, you know, like I said, it can be stubborn kind of about what it believes in, but in it, it comes from the heart, the Leo energy, and it comes from like, you know, like the energy of the king or queen, the, the energy of like, you know, really caring for others and using our gifts to, you know, help all people who are around us basically in society. So this is like, you know, for the next month is a time where we really want to bring that out. We want to bring out what our best and most unique talents are. We want to express them. We want to show them to people, you know, and believe in ourselves. And, and that's what helps us find ourselves too. You know, Leo is ruled by the sun or the, and, and so it's all about, you know, finding who that unique being is that's you and, and not feeling like you need to cap that for the others or for society or whatever, because if we can't find that uniqueness, then we're not going to find the balance and fulfillment we want in life. Okay. So the big thing going on this week, remember I talked about it last week, Venus just went retrograde at the very end of Leo. And right now Mercury is getting near the end of Leo too. So they are going to conjunct one another this week at, 29th degree and that's on Thursday in Leo while Venus is retrograde and then also at the same time they are forming all week long a yod with the Neptune Pluto sextile now I've talked about yods before but I'm going to just give you a quick reminder it's one of the aspect patterns that it's out there that, you know, multiple planets can form together. And in this case, we actually, instead of having three, we actually have four since Mercury is conjunct Venus too. So there's two of them that are both quincunxing, both Pluto and Neptune. And so God is like, it looks like like a finger pointing in one direction or an arrowhead pointing in one direction in the chart and so many times we call it the finger of fate and and it's pointing us in a certain direction or pushing us in a certain direction and we have to kind of let go is part of like what the energy of a yacht is if we fight 
the energy of a yacht, then it can be very, very discouraging. Um, it can be very, very difficult. It can throw us way off balance, like nothing seems to blend well together. None of the things that we normally do seem to work right. And if we are in touch with like the inner part of our energy, the intuitive energies that we have, we do get a sense during a yod that we're on a certain path and there's a reason for that. And that we just somehow need to let that path unfold. And for those who trust that inner guidance, you know, we can get very firm in feeling that. Like, we don't know where that's taking us, but we do know intuitively inside that that's the path we're supposed to be on. But this can be very confusing to other people too because like you know to them it looks like you know we're just like allowing things to suck us along and it's like exactly because that's what feels right right now and that's the key to the yacht because it is such a fateful energy and it is trying to bring us to a place that we may not be able to access by ourselves, by our own actions. So we need to let go. We need to adjust. We need to separate. We need to change our attitudes. Mercury in particular being involved in this yacht says that we need to adjust our thinking, our attitudes based on some of the deeper things we're seeing right now. Queen Kong's Pluto, you know, there's some really deep insights that we're getting into our psychology and the psychology of other people and like the ability to separate ourselves from people who are not, you know, on that level that we need, you know, and part of it is our ideals again, because there is the Neptune involved, you know, it's like, that's the problem, you know, maybe if the top of the iceberg represents say maybe 10 percent of reality and that's our external world well the neptune pluto is in touch with the other 90 percent underneath and if it's 90 percent that's probably a more significant reality even though the mind can see and convince the ego that all there is is this outside world and no one, that's all that matters so it's an adjustment of attitudes that is more aligned with the inner world's ideals that's going on. And then that also spills over into relationships because Venus is there too. It's like looking at relationships and saying which ones really have the value, have the depth, have the ability to follow you into like literally this rabbit hole of like finding and separating ourselves from these older things that are not working anymore and refining our ideals. That's what the Neptune Pluto sextile is all about. The Neptune Pluto sextile, and I've said this before, has been going on and off for decades actually because the two planets move at a very similar rate. So when they get locked into an aspect, it, it can go on and off, in and out of, of that energy, of that aspect for many, many years. And Neptune and Pluto are two transpersonal planets. They are about e evolution. They are evolving our society in the background, whether we're aware of, actively involved in, or whatever, ourselves. This is what's happening. And you think about the last few decades, you know, Neptune Pluto has brought a lot of social change, social reform. A lot of people who have had different ideas out there and have, and those things are slowly changing society over a long term. You know, and then when an inner planet locks in 
to these two outer planets with an aspect, that's when it becomes most potent, that energy. And this is the energy of like the, the evolution of Earth and humanity from like greater sources, from inner sources, from spiritual sources, from otherworldly sources that really are not invested in the external world that our egos and our minds and our relationships and a lot of other things are. So this is a big learning lesson week, especially to our minds and our relationships about what we really need to do that. And like, you know, the mind, you know, you know, it needs to be used to discipline ourselves, you know, and that's what would be best for this. That's the best thing that the mind is used for as a tool to discipline things, emotions and, and, and compulsions and behavior so that they don't fall into like a fearful zone or an overly zealous zone to the point where we're making very imbalanced decisions. This is about like really seeing how things operate, really seeing how the effects of the mind change things, our beliefs, our attitudes, and, how, and the ditto with relationships, how relationships change things. So this is a separation type of aspect. It's an adjustment. It's saying, what are my attitudes and beliefs and relationships I need to look at in an honest and forthright way? That's that Leo energy. And be honest with myself about like what's what needs to be adjusted, what people are best for me, what people are not best for me. And it can give us an incredible amount of compassion and understanding but also the ability to, you know, be reborn in the way we, you know, deal with how we're thinking and our belief systems are, and also how we relate to other people. Now, the Mercury conjunct Venus is really nice because this brings the mind and emotions together and gives us the ability to think and communicate our emotions in very subtle, articulate ways, very deep. And with Venus retrograde right now, it brings people from the past or relationships that started in the past are the ones that we really need to be being honest and forthright with our emotions to and letting people know how we really feel. And you know, this is very artistic energy too. There's, there's, there's the ability to output a lot of consciousness changing art based on your ideals through words, like poetry, storytelling, writing, creative writing, rapping, all, you know, myths, communication even that's honest and open and is therefore creative. All those things are very accessible right now during this yacht and the Mercury Venus coming together brings that kind of energy with us. It's a very healthy energy for that. And like I said, the Venus retrograde will have a lot to do with people from the past that we really, those are the ones that we really have to make connections with, you know, that, you know, but like also gives us the ability to really understand how things work together, how the mind and emotions affect each other and affect the world around us. So we can get into the very deep understanding of that kind of energy. And what's really interesting about this too, on top of all this other stuff, I mean, one of the things too that's interesting that I said about the mental discipline, the one element that's missing in the yacht is air. So that's what we need to consciously bring in 
to bring balance. And once again, that is about bringing in higher reasoning in the intellect. Now, what's interesting is Mercury and Venus are also trining the North Node at the same time. Remember, the nodes just went in, just went back into North Node, into Aries, and South Node into Libra. So there's a trine going on between <clears throat> Mercury and Venus, which shows that we can get support too. Like there's the right people out there to connect with. And that like a group energy, group mind becomes greater than what the individual can achieve by themselves on all kinds of levels, subtle levels, that inner world level that we're all gonna be very moved and interested in this week can be like really enhanced if there's group mind going on is what the trying to the north node is. Now what's interesting about this though is Pluto is square the nodal axis this week. Remember Pluto retrograded back into Cap and we just had the nodes go last week go back into Aries and Libra. So now Pluto is going to square the nodes. And that is very transformative on a large level. This talks about events that affect large groups of people, the whole society, whole nations, maybe even more, where it brings in transformation and change that's irrevocable. It can be a shared and common destiny with large masses of people, and it can be very transformative events. And we can see this happening almost daily right now with the climate events being exasperated to a point way beyond what any model had thought they would be this quickly, and people suffering in large masses together because of that. And of course, this also can relate to any man-made tragic events too, like the war that has been ongoing between Russia and Ukraine. Once again, Pluto's all about violence, destruction, bringing things down into the ashes and then having something be reborn out of that. And, and so the nodal axis shows this is a very karmic energy that's going on on a much larger scale too that we're all kind of being sucked into you know so very interesting energy this week we need to just kind of let it take us whatever you're feeling inside personally that you're really being sucked into and you don't really feel like you have like being on a yacht it's like being on a roller coaster like you strap on the seatbelt and you're going for a ride and you can't get off until the end you don't want to get off until the end right so like you know but at the end there's that thrill and exhilaration of like i made it you know and wow you know this is where you know like just a thrilling place to be now at the end. So the Yod brings an award at the end of that path if you follow what that's supposed to be. And it can be inexplicable to your logical mind. It can be inexplicable to the others around you. Yet somehow inside you know it's the right place. So that's where we're all going. And I think this thing's taking us together. You know, it's all going to be a lot of shared events. Now the one other big thing I want to mention this week is Mercury is going to go into Virgo the very next day on Friday. And so Mercury is very strong in Virgo. It's not only a, a sign that it's ruled, it's also the sign that it's exalted. And this is the serious side of, Mer of, of, of Mercury. This isn't the Gemini trickster side that's going all around from one thing to another and not being very grounded. This is the side that is very focused and concentrated and uses the mind like a tool and has perfected techniques that are just like have high standards and high value and get things done. This is the ability to use the mind and the hands and the body and tools to have these great systems that get a lot of work done and don't miss any of the details. Mercury can really make a plan 
know, see all the parts right down to the very last thing and then be able to follow that plan. So there's a lot of strength there. But what does that mean? It means we have a very crit strong, high critical faculty. So that's the danger of Mercury in Virgo is to think that, okay, I've got the right plan, you know, and think and then get very critical about anyone else's plan. What we need to do is use that criticism actually on ourselves and continue to perfect our plan, make it self-critical, but not in a negative way, constructive criticism. And in fact, if you feel the need to, where you feel, feel you have something of value to contribute to others, that's the way to actually bring in the criticism to, to them so that they are receptive. Constructive criticism is what we really want to focus on. Otherwise, it's best to keep it to yourself, actually. And that's many times what we do. You know, Virgo is a quieter energy. It's not like that Gemini chatty energy <clears throat> that that Mercury has. It's more of a, like, let's really focus. It's a great time to make agreements, negotiations, to make detailed plans with others, and to carry them out. So, very, very, you know, and, and what's interesting about this, we're going to have an extended stay in Virgo because just like Venus, Mercury is going to go retrograde on August 23rd. Mercury will go retrograde at 22 degrees of Virgo and go back to 8 degrees of Virgo uh, by October, I mean, um, September, I'm sorry, September um, 15th. And so it's going to stay once again, like I said earlier in the year. This is a year, every year, when Mercury goes retrograde three times a year. It's usually in one element. And this year it's the Earth signs, which is so telling once again. Because once again, it's Earth things, the climate change and things like that, that are screwing up a lot of stuff. You know, transportation, mobility, um, commerce communications, all those things that Mercury deals with this year, those are the things that are slowing it down. So we're going to have this long stay in Virgo, which is really good as far as Mercury on a personal level and working on those plans and details. But, you know, it's also like going to have a seven or eight or what is it like even a 10, a 10 day period of August 23rd through September 3rd with both Mercury and Venus will be retrograde at the same time. And remember, remember what happened when Mercury and Mars went retrograde at the same time in Capricorn. When Mercury was retrograde in Capricorn last winter, it really slowed things down around the holidays. If you remember, a lot of people, you know, the world and things that were going on then. So like when two to three personal planets are retrograde together, it can really affect our normal life. So we can expect that for those 10 days too. But one last little thing I wanted to mention is on Saturday, there is a Sun Quincung Saturn. And what that's all about is being a little bit boxing ourselves in a little too much, like being a little bit too serious about what our duties are and like being like too conservative socially and not allowing more stuff in. It's almost like we shut down ourselves and like, you know, it's almost like we, we look around and like, oh, you know, I have to do all this stuff, blah, 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 kind of get a negative issue, attitude about it, maybe not, you know, maybe not things go that well and then, you know, kind of lose some of our confidence and what we really need to do with this aspect is actually to force ourselves to go out and allow some input in despite being in that negative sense of things, you know. So that's um, something on Saturday, you know, just so you realize that's going on too. So like, you know, you may not feel like, maybe maybe you have some social event that's planned and you may not feel like doing it and you may be tempted to stay home instead, but it'd be better to go and do it because there, you know, it would help adjust your attitude and, you know, bring, you know, bring some new stuff in, break up some of the rigidness of our behavior and our thoughts and what we're doing um, 
on that day. All right, um, well, this is Matt Lawton. This is the Astrological Wings channel, and that's what I got for you guys this week. Next week, we're going to have a full moon in Aquarius. I think it's at six or seven degrees, if I remember right. Um, I think that's on Monday, too. And then also next week, we, it will be going into August, so I'll probably try to do both the weekly with the full moon and then the August, you know, as part of the vlog next week. And if there's too much, I may have to do two vlogs, but, you know, I think there's a chance I'll be able to get both of them in on the same vlog. So look forward to that next week. Now, remember, the Astrological Winds Channel is a free service that I do every week. I've been doing it for years, YouTube, before that podcast, before that written vlogs even. So um, I would really love if you'd help me to help it to continue to grow, which has been doing really well the past year or two, <clears throat> by passing the link on to somebody else. And, you know, the over 50% of the world believes in astrology, so you know you're not putting yourself out there on a limb by doing that. So please do that. Or if you need a reading, or if someone else you know needs a reading on a professional level, not someone who just opened a book and read some astrology, not a computer program spitting out some printout or report for you, you know, if, if you really want a truly deep astrological reading, on your natal chart or what's coming up for you in the next year or our relationship or on your children or on trying to find the best timing for some event or if we're trying to find the answer to some question that you've been having a hard time making a decision for or finding what your deeper soul purpose is or finding a better place to live in the world where your energies would operate better with your chart all those kinds of readings are available to me and i've been doing stuff like that for over 20 years and let me tell you when you get a reading like that it is a magical experience for you it gives you a lot of power in your life to make better choices to feel more self-fulfilled so when you're ready for that please drop me an email at m-a-t-t-h-u-e-823 at gmail.com and if you know anyone else that's ready for that same thing, just have them contact me via email. If you do have my phone number already, you're more and someone you know is interested in it, you're more than welcome to pass the number on, of course. And remember, the Astrological Wings channel is available also on Instagram. So like, and I post extra stuff sometimes during the week there. So, you know, if you have an Instagram account, please become a follower there. And the other place I do pay, put the link is on my private Facebook account. You have to friend me and then I'll approve the friendship. And I don't go on too much. So like, you know, just be patient with that. But it's Matthew with two T's, Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N. If you'd like to give a donation to the blog, my Venmo is at, you know, the symbol at, we all know that, the A with the circle, and then Matthew once again, capital M, two T's, hyphen, Lawton, L-A-U-T-E-N, with a capital L. And, and no amount is too small, but I'd really love for you to pass the vlog around. I'd really love for you to come and get a reading from me when you're ready. Or if you want a beginner's classes, I have them available too. And also, if you're connected with any kind of group that would ever want a lecture or a workshop or a question and answer session or mini readings done at an event, once again, I'm available for all those things. Open up some dialogue with me by emailing, don't be afraid, <laughs> M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com. All right, uh, very interesting week. Let's see where the roller coaster takes us. And then uh, next week, we've got that full moon in Aquarius. I'll see you all then.